the last video, I talked about the light source reflections. So now let's talk about these tan colored layers, which I've called basic reflections. And these are all separated from the light source and are all basic circles or polygons by default. Basic reflections have some other qualities that set them apart, but we'll get to that shortly. Our first basic reflection is this reflection shape element, which is just a shape layer. And unlike solid layers, shape layers in After Effects are vector-based, so they will never lose resolution. And as lens flare elements, they're slightly faster for the computer to process. And if I open up a layer and open contents, you can see there's a bunch of controls under Polystar here that control the shape. And also if you go to Add, there's a bunch of effects that you can add. Like there's a pucker and bloat or a zigzag. And I don't know why you'd want a shape like that, but you can do it. And most likely you won't need to mess around in here because all the important controls are up here in the effects controls panel. And most important maybe is the roundness slider. And that's how you can turn this polygon into a circle. You can just enter in 130. Or you could also change the number of sides. And there's a center fade control. And there's also a set of stroke controls if you want to give it a border. And just below the reflection shape is the reflection shape array, which is a very important element. It's one of the ways of getting large numbers of similar looking reflections. And if I open up the contents on this one, you can see there's not one polystar, but 10. And all 10 are randomly placed on this array path. And the random seed slider will give them new random positions. You can go here and you can hide polystars that you don't want to see. Or you can duplicate them to make more shapes. And each new shape that you duplicate will appear in another random position on the array path. And now you might be thinking, wait a minute, there's more than 10 shapes here. And that's good because it means that you can count. And actually, if I were to duplicate 50 of these polystars, you might start to notice longer processing time. So instead, I've added several copies of this radio shadow effect. And each of these effects creates a shadow, or a copy, essentially, of all the shapes and shadows that are before it. And by default, two of these radio shadow effects are on, but you can create hundreds of shapes by turning on the others. Now this reflection shape array element has all the same reflection controls as the reflection shape layer right above it, but you also have these array controls. And the array controls are how you get variation in the shapes. And you can see there's a softness variation, size, brightness, and color variation. And you can also change the proximity and the scatter. And then under these array controls are the individual shadow controls. And they let you make adjustments to the shadows made by these radio shadow effects. And so, for example, you can make it so that there are more reflections up close and fewer far away. Now let's look at a similar element, the Reflection Particles Array. And these shapes are made with Particle Playground. And this effect is a little bit slower than the Reflection Shape Array, and you have less control over the shape of each reflection. You can change the shape to several predetermined types, but no polygons or ovals. Uh, the true advantage of this element is the 3D rotation. And when this Turn On 3D Rotation box is checked, you can see that the reflections seem to rotate on a 3D axis. And there's a number of controls here that can influence where the particles sit in 3D space. And the Particle Playground effect also has this really useful texture feature, which uses your footage to add some very realistic and organic feeling textures to the reflections that change as the uh, footage changes. And it's a powerful feature that really gets great results. And I talk a little bit more about it in the Cool Things You Can Do tutorial. The next element is a good one, and it's very basic. It's called the Reflection Solid. Not to be confused with the Reflection Shape. This is a solid layer and not a vector shape. And the circle you can see is made with these masks. And what makes this element powerful is that you can create any shape you can imagine just by drawing it with the mask tool. And this allows you to get some really organic and natural feeling shapes. And you'll see that I occasionally drew some really weird shapes using multiple masks with varying feather and opacity values. And then I'd add some evolution of them using the expressions library. And it would create some complex evolving shapes. 
And lastly, there's this textured reflection solid, which is just like the last element, the reflection solid, but with an added fractal noise effect for generating textures that evolve with the movement of the layer. And I made this element early on, and then I eventually made the effects library, and I included the fractal noise effect in there. So really you can just copy and paste the fractal noise effect and its slider controls from the effects library onto any element and get an evolving texture on it. But I figured I would keep this element around anyway. So that is the last main element, uh, but what is this one at the bottom called alpha mat? If you haven't used alpha mats before, they're used to hide parts of another layer. And really all this layer is is a reflection shape element, but with all the unnecessary expressions and controls stripped away so that it runs as fast as possible. And you can see if I put it above this textured reflection solid element, and I'll make this one a little bit smaller. And I'll move this alpha mat so that it's only overlapping part of the reflection solid. And then I'll go to my bottom layer and I set the track mat to alpha mat. And now you can see that any part of the layer that the alpha mat overlapped is now showing and everything else is hidden. Okay, and finally let's talk about this control layer up at the top. The control layer is just a null layer, which looks like a little red box. And you can just click it and drag it around to move your lens flare. And the position parameter can be animated with keyframes, or you can link it to the motion tracking data of your footage. And now with this layer selected, you can see in your effects controls panel, you've got all these slider controls separated by these three titles, global control, reflections control, and motion tracking. And motion tracking is a different tutorial, so let's just look at the global controls. And actually, I'm going to open up one of the presets first so you can see what they do. We'll open up Sea Urchin. And I'll select Sea Urchin's control layer and go back to the effects controls panel. Now the global controls affect the lens flare as a whole, so all elements at once. You've got brightness, scale, you can flatten or stretch all the elements. You can rotate them. And then these flicker controls affect the global brightness value so that it fluctuates at the uh, speed and amount that you want, resulting in a flicker effect. Now I mentioned earlier that the color coding of these layers has significance. And the cyan layers are light source elements and they're anchored to the light source by default. And then these tan layers are basic reflections and are detached by default. And all the basic reflections can be controlled by this next group of slider controls called reflections controls. And this way you can adjust or animate all the basic reflections as a whole without changing the look of the light source. Now any of these cyan light source elements can become basic reflections and receive these reflections controls. And all you got to do is check this box that says allow global reflection control on any of those layers. And on a final note, one of the cool things about just about every slider control on this control layer is that they have a bottom value, which is negative 100. So even if you have an element with a local scale that's way, way up, when you turn the global scale down, every element will shrink proportionally to each other so that when the slider reaches negative 100, the scale of each element will reach 0%. And zero is always the default value on the slider controls throughout the whole template. So that does it for the elements. Uh, check out the cool things you can do tutorial to get some more tips on how to use these elements to get some really interesting results.